I am James Swanick, and today we are talking to the UK's leading biohacker and the founder of the Health Optimization Summit in London, which is probably Europe's biggest biohacking event. Uh, his name is Tim Gray, and he's a new friend of mine who we met, uh, I guess we met in 2023, and we're here in London, England. I have a niece and nephew who have both been diagnosed as having ADHD. I would submit that the reason that they are displaying whatever signs that doctors say is ADHD is more to do with their diet than the fact that they've got ADHD. So just, and just to give further context, I see them eating uh, chips, sugary drinks, uh, red cordial, um, energy drinks, um, uh, cornflakes, breads, orange juice, why are all these foods that I just explained bad for you? And how could that lead to what doctors would say are the symptoms of ADHD? So there's, there's two points on this is nutrition or food, diet, whatever, is one thing that's linked to ADHD for sure. And the second is um, the use of devices and constant stimulation from all angles. For instance, you know, before we had the iPhone or laptop or whatever, you know, we'd be on a bus or in a car or somewhere or other, and we'd be thinking, we'd be looking out the window, we'd be playing I Spy with, if we were in the family car, you know. We wouldn't be having a five-second gap default to Instagram or default to chatting to one of 50 people on WhatsApp. So we're always looking for the next bit of stimulus. And as a result, uh, uh, dopamine spikes, which then exhausts our system, that makes us keep on hunting for more and more stuff. Therefore, we have less attention. And actually, I noticed on my phone usage, you know, at one point I was using my phone seven hours a day. Mm. And I couldn't focus. I couldn't concentrate. I had to force myself to meditate every day. It was really tough. I couldn't even lie still for five minutes. It was just ridiculous. And the more I've tapered down my use and the more conscious I am with using it, the more my attention has been on track. Uh, you know, when I'm with people, my focus is there. It's not anywhere else. My phone doesn't get picked up if I'm at the dinner table. There's multiple things I sit in place. So I think, you know, kids these days are using devices more than, well, especially we did at our age, you know, like we didn't have mobile phones until we were probably 16 or 18, you know, in those days. And we're brought, brought up with an Atari or some games console, not something that's killing and, you know, hyper stimulating you all day, every day. So, so that's the one element. But to go back to the food one, I actually recorded a podcast with Dr. Daniel Amen. Um, and he has scanned over 250,000 brains with spec scan to see brain health. And, you know, we're not just talking, um, you know, how it's operating is the unit itself and how the brain health is. And one of the things that he noticed on these scans is that people that ate processed food had the worst brain health. So what we're saying is, is when there's lots of influencers or industry saying, actually, no, processed food is fine. We fortify it with whatever. That's bullshit. Over 250,000 scans, you can see the brain health from people that eat processed foods. It's proven. You don't, that's not small data. That's far bigger than most studies that are double blind, even at 50, 200 participants or whatever. And when you look at one of the leading issues that kids have these days, ADHD. But when you see kids that are on a nutritious, natural, plant based, and meat inclusive diet with fish and healthy oils and some good dairy, not the traditional dairy, their brain health is fantastic. In fact, Daniel actually recently released a book exactly on this with children's mental health issues and brain health mm. around this. So it's a shame that ADHD is so prevalent these days. It's also a shame that there's so much processed food everywhere, but really it comes from education to parents, such as, for instance, if stroke when I have kids, hopefully, you know, I know that they will see plants and meat as superfood, as literally to be a superman, and the processed stuff as weak crap that doesn't have any nutrition. And that starts with me.
luckily unfortunately my parents didn't give me quite the same advice but it is what it is yeah but we can do better when we know better we can do better i mean i just feel so good when i have a breakfast with chicken eggs avocado healthy fats when i have a traditional breakfast say of cereal a glass of orange juice toast i crash i mean i just get so lethargic I'm foggy, I'm distracted, I'm irritable. And probably an hour after I've eaten that food, I'm now craving more sugary food. Why is that? Like, why is that happening? It's actually very easy. I mean, if you track your blood glucose, which I often do, you know, with a constant glucose monitor, which connects to your phone, you get to see over a period of time of what works for you and what doesn't. And if you have high carb, high carb so it could be you know cornflakes or anything sugary whatever you'll see that your blood sugar spikes very quickly you know and it's good to have a good response it comes up your body then releases insulin which then puts let's say sugar into the cell um, which then stores it so to bring down your sugar levels in the blood right so every time you eat something you spike and then crash but the thing is because so much insulin goes in you actually go below your baseline of your normal blood sugar level, which then gives you a crash, which is why after a Sunday roast or whatever, you have a crash afterwards, and then you recuperate and you're okay again as your blood sugar comes back up again. What happens is people are yo-yoing all day, every day like this. Now, a spike is no problem, especially if you're a bodybuilder. When you're working out, you eat carbs and protein after a workout. This helps spike your blood glucose, which then supports your muscle repair because of the, the, the benefits of the mitochondria from having easy energy. The thing is, is when you're having it constantly throughout the day, your body is storing it, which then converts to fat. So it's not optimal. What it is good is to actually have a more stable blood sugar with spikes, depending on when your workout are and what your goals are, um, but to keep it stable as possible and higher fat and higher protein. Well, fat doesn't spike your blood glucose, obviously. Protein does a bit because it's slower, breaks down into sugars. But having higher fat and higher protein and lower carbs, but not no carbs, is ideal, especially for me. And I find that the more carbs I actually add in personally, actually the more weight I lose because my body needs carbs as its primary source of energy. Some people I know that need fat more. Mm. And it's very, very interesting. And Obviously, I've seen this on VO2 max testing to see what my body needs at maximum peak output, and it is you know, pretty much solely glucose. So if I don't eat enough carbs, and when I say carbs, brown, brown rice or white rice, white potatoes, sweet potatoes, these things, not carbs in cakes and pastries and <laughs> pasta. Yeah. Um, but as a result, my body operates more efficiently. So to go back to the point of blood sugar spikes is – you want to keep it a nice, smooth blood sugar with occasional spikes, say, after workouts. And if you do have something that's sugary, go for a walk or go and exercise because then you're using up that instead of storing it. Um, and then you find that you won't have the crash so much as a result. There was a book I read called Get Up by James Levine, and he said that if you go for a gentle 15-minute walk immediately after your last bite of food, that it halves your blood glucose levels which prevents you from storing unwanted fat and prevents you from feeling tired and having that crash. So uh, every time now that I finish a meal, it's almost like as soon as the, the last bite goes in my mouth, I'm on the clock. It's like I've got to be up and walking within five minutes. So I'll, sometimes I'm with friends and they're like, what are you doing? Why are you in such a hurry? I'm like, because I want to get up and walk so I'm not storing unwanted fat and getting this, this kind of blood glucose spike, which is going to make me crash later on. 